Earlier this month, Art Basel announced the cancellation of all three of its physical shows due to the coronavirus pandemic. But the events are still going ahead with a new format, online viewing rooms. Until Saturday the 26th, this week, the Swiss art event is holding its third virtual fair of the year. It includes 100 galleries from 28 countries, showing six works each in the online viewing rooms. And for the first time, these galleries need to pay to participate. The organisers hope smaller exhibitions will better suit the need of the art market right now, which moved online predominantly after the pandemic. To give us the lowdown on how an art fair goes online, we're joined by Georgina Adam, the editor-at-large of The Art Newspaper. Georgina, thank you so much for joining us on Showcase. This is Art Basel's third virtual fair this year. What do you think they've learnt as they've progressed? Are things getting better each time? Yeah, things are definitely getting better. Uh, the very first one, which was uh, coincided just after Art Basel Hong Kong, um, was really quite clunky, it was difficult to use, it was static. Uh, now things have improved, it's much more interactive, it's much more lively. For example, at the moment you can actually watch an artist, Rickrit, making a work of art in his studio with his assistants. You can click through and talk to the galleries, so it is better. Nevertheless, it's still not the same as going to a fair, seeing your friends, talking to the dealers, seeing the art. That's what I wanted to bring up next. It's, it's not just the physicality of viewing it, it's the discussion that ensues afterwards, talking about it with other people who are viewing, with the curators at the gallery. How is Art Basel tackling that issue? It's pretty difficult for them to tackle it because they can't reproduce the real life experience. All they can do is show you art that's for sale. They can. They can embed videos in which you visit the artist's studio or the artist talks about his work. So that's good. Uh, that, that's a positive thing. But they can't reproduce the experience. And they themselves say that this will never replace an art fair in real life, in the real world. For you personally, what do you miss the most uh, compared to an online viewing room compared to in real life? What's the one thing you miss? Well, I guess seeing people. I mean, seeing your colleagues, seeing the dealers, making discoveries. Uh, it's a very uh, solitary experience sitting there clicking on your computer. It's really not much fun. But there are some people that like it. My husband looked at the site and said it was great because he could see the art and he didn't have to talk to anyone. So, you know, some people prefer it. Horses for courses, I suppose, right? Uh, I guess so. The fair isn't just about exposing people to art, about people being able to view it. It's also, a com there's a commercial element to this as well. How is the commercial side going compared to other years? It's always very difficult to tell how the commercial side is going because you don't really get the truth. But there was recently a Bank of America survey in which a number of galleries claimed that they only made about 25% of the amount they would have sailed, sold in a real life fair. So it certainly is less, less. And as much as they can do, and they are trying very hard to make it an agreeable experience, you know, it's uh, from the technical point of view, it's easier to navigate. It, it doesn't replace because it's a little bit like if you buy something online, you go to buy something online and you buy that thing. If you go to a shop or a fair, you see something else that you might not have thought of and you might buy it. And that online can never replace. So with that in mind, I mean, hopefully this pandemic is going to end sometime soon. <laughs> when it does and we're allowed back into galleries again, do you think Art Basel and other fairs may keep an online component? I think definitely. I think what is going to happen is that we will see, uh, for a start, people are going to go back to travelling slowly. At the moment, people aren't travelling so much. And that's not going to happen all of a sudden, even with a vaccine. People's habits have changed. 
So what I think will happen is that you will have a real life fair. You will have probably fewer international exhibitors come, fewer international visitors. It'll be more local, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and you will have, for example, a VIP preview with people visiting, but visiting virtually. So the fair exists. But maybe the dealer will take you around his stand and you're sitting in Taiwan or in South America and you're actually making a virtual visit. So I think there's an element of hybrid that will always be seen in art fairs coming up once we're ab they're able to hold them in the real world. We're almost out of time, but I can't let you go without picking your brains as to who you think we should be uh, definitely clicking on in this online viewing room offer. Well, I mean, I think it probably you should walk, look at, I think it's Gallery Continua that's got Rick Ritt, um, because you can actually see them working in the studio. On the other hand, you know, you're watching them. It's not the same as going into the studio and talking to them. Um, and there was also somebody called Ebony Patterson. I liked her work very much. So those are two things to have a look at. It'll be very interesting to see uh, how it all changes when we are allowed to go back into the galleries. We always appreciate your contribution. Thanks so much, Georgina Adam.